You are experts at what you do. Charge for what you're worth. Set your plan and do what you know. All right, friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast, amazing episode for you today. We're going to talk about charging what you're worth. You have value. Charge for it. A little bit of office talk, closing thought of the episode. This is the Ultimate OD Podcast. Here we go. All right, friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast. Thank you for all the new likes, all the new follows. I appreciate you. I love the community that we're growing together. Iron sharpens iron. We're making each other better. Now, if you are on X or Twitter, I said it right that time, X or Twitter, follow me. Uh, I like to put my thoughts out there. I've tried to change it up. So I have my morning thought, wake up, what's on my mind. And then I have my biggest thing that I've learned over the course of the day, 140 characters, I try to put out there. Now, as I get better, I will try to put out more threads. I'm not there yet. I have a podcast for heaven's sakes and I do other things, but I love to put my thoughts out there. So please follow. If you like this podcast, if you like the YouTube channel, like, leave a comment, tell me where you're listening from. I want to know how many countries, how many states we can hit up. Also, do you have a practice or do you not have a practice? I want to know how many people are thinking about doing it. How many of you have made the leap? Again, iron sharpens iron. We all make each other better. Now, as fourth quarter approaches, I just want to encourage you, finish strong. Okay, we keep going year round. We're supposed to be full throttle ahead all the time. But end of the year, a lot of uh, holidays. We got Thanksgiving. We got Christmas. I have a midwinter break I'm going to utilize, I believe. So just a lot more time off away from the office. I'm going to Vision Expo West. Or at this point, when you watch this, I've already went to Vision Expo West. So why do I bring it up? We've worked so hard to get here, finish strong. What I do not want you to do get to the end of the year, see a bunch of money in the bank and say, I'm going to buy equipment because I don't want to pay taxes. Well, if you buy a piece of equipment that's garbage that you're never going to use, I'd rather pay taxes than have money, right? That's just a mentality I used to have is let me buy a bunch of new stuff. Thankfully, I needed a lot of new stuff. So it's worked out. As I start a new office, it's also going to work out. Timing wise, I wish it would have happened before the end of the year, but that's a story for another day, and we'll, we'll touch on that in future episodes. Let me get down to the nitty-gritty. Today, we're going to talk about what is your value, what are you worth? All right? I'm going to say this like rubbing a genie on a bottle, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth. Okay? When I first started, you guys have heard this a million times. If you're new to the podcast, you'll hear this, and then keep listening. I talk about this a lot. I just wanted butts in the seat. I didn't care who, what, when, where, and I was a low-cost provider. I was $59 exams. I thought in my head, I'll give them the best possible exam they could ever have, and they will just tell everyone. What I did not realize is when you charge $59 for an exam, you get a $59 patient. And that's not being mean. That's not being critical. It's just the nature of the beast. You'd look to anyone that has big ticket items. They're like, someone charges them $1,000, and they're like, okay, sure, send the invoice. You charge them $100, and you get a call of, hey, can you come in early? Why you're here, can you also look at X, Y, and Z? It's just a different mentality, okay? The same thing happens for people shopping us. When I was shopping for my kid's dentist, I found the lowest one. Nope, my kids are worth more than that. Found the highest one, maybe, and I found what everything was in between, and I was on the higher end of the spectrum. I don't want to be right in the middle. I don't want to be the lowest. My kids have more worth than that. I don't necessarily need to be the highest, but I'm not going to be lowest. I'm going to be slightly to the right. So know where you price yourself at. My mentality is if I'm going to go into this right now, I want to be the highest cost provider. I'm going to just, no points for second place. You're the second most expensive. You're just the second most expensive. If you're the most expensive, that has value in my mind. You must have something that you do for it. That's what I would like to be. So how does this relate to my practice? Well, let me take a step back and not just charging for what you're worth. Knowing your value, what we can do. For example, medical optometry is here to say. It's what we have to do. We have to push forward. 
When I first started off cold, I had an Optimap. Great. I listened to a podcast earlier this week, and they said if you bought one piece of equipment, would you get an IPL or an Optimap first? Roughly the same in cost. And they said Optimap. Well, the podcast was sponsored by Optimap. Coincidence. Uh, but I would definitely get the IPL because that chart that gives you revenue. That is a specialty. You're establishing your brand with that. And Optimap, it was great for a wow factor, but I couldn't do, I'd see a bunch of disease and I couldn't do anything about it, right? I like the IPL because you can treat it into your seg without an OCT, without a visual field. But again, I'm just picking out the IPL. An OCT is probably the first piece of equipment I think I would try to get because you can do so much with it. That being said, the whole point of that is you need to do medical optometry. It took me 11 years to realize this. Last year, all right, I, I look at myself year to date, and I am down a little bit in overall comprehensive exams. I'm at 2,039. Last year, I was at 2,098 at this point. But guess what? I've seen last, I'm up 20K. I'm charging what I'm worth. All right, we'll explain this as we get further in the episode, but I'm charging what I'm worth. 20K more in profit. All right, cool. Medical exams, 551 this year, 240 last year, up 50K. That's nice, right? Because I'm doing medical right. I am not afraid to charge for what I'm worth. I'm going to schedule my treatment plan, and that's what we're going to follow. If it's not your cup of soup, I'm not the right doctor for you. You guys need to have this mentality. You are experts at what you do. Charge for what you're worth. Set your plan and do what you know. You're going to get some pushback. That's fine. 20% 20% of your patients should be complaining that you're too expensive anyways. Remember that, okay? So my revenue per patient too, because of that, I'm up like 30%. So overall, I'm charging for what I'm worth, seeing a little less comprehensive, more medical, but I'm happier, we're making more money. That's a business. I'm providing better care. So it's not always about money. It's practicing within the scope of optometry, all right? So... Again, the whole mantra, rub in that genie's bottle, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth. Are you charging what you're worth? Three areas I think you can do this in. Number one, managed care. We all have our feelings about managed care. I'm one of the doctors that actually takes it, and I just accept it as a cost of doing business. I have the belief that if I can get them in with the managed care plan, we can get them for dry eye, we can get them for glaucoma, we can get them for their medical eye care. We also can make money on managed care. You can make money, okay? But you have to commit to it. So what do I mean by that? High quality lenses, digital lenses, Verilux X, the new XR, uh, high-end Crizal, Avance, Sapphire for non-glare coatings, Transitions 8, second pair sales, polarized lenses. Make your optical a booming business. Okay, if you do it right, you can make this happen. I've, I've heard this, I've said this, you want to be a painkiller, not a vitamin. All right, painkillers solve problems. What are their problems and how can you solve it? Vision is their problem, sunglasses help, computer glasses help, you know, their task specific glasses help. Contact lenses help for hunting, for these things they're doing, You can make managed care work for you, but approach it as you're solving the problems that they have, okay? Frames. Don't be afraid to have high-end frames in there. Make them independent. They can't get them online. They can't shop you around. Again, that's my philosophy. That's what I'm trying to do. Managed care, you can make money, but you have to charge what you're worth. You can't be afraid that they're going to push back. If you just take the $40 exam and have them take their script to go, will not make money. If you just take the $48 exam and do what's covered, you're not going to make money. It's not best for the patient either. They're getting a garbage product that they'll judge you on it, period. Make sure you charge what you're worth and you stand behind the materials that you pick. You are the doctor. When you're picking a glaucoma drop or a dry eye treatment or a type of scleral lens, you pick what matters to you, what you think is the best Treatment option. Why would you do any different with glasses and lenses? They're a prescription device. 
that you are utilizing to optimize someone's vision. Make it count. Number two, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth. Services. My OB management. I have a patient that I have, I have right now I think we have like 15 to 20 total. Uh, we're building that back up because no one else does it. So I like it. But I, and I know what I value, like what it costs for ortho K. I know what it costs for the soft contacts. I know what I charge for the ap- atrophy. But to be in my program, there is a fee. When I first got into this, I was worried about the pushback on the fee. Now, this is my fee. If you don't see value in it, that's fine. You don't have to see me for this. We don't have to do it. But this is what I charge. I am an expert in this field. Other doctors don't do it. I paid for the equipment. There is an inherent value to seeing me. I'm going to charge for that. And I know that there's patients that will come and, you know, they have multiple kids. They have a lot of finances. I totally understand. How can I help you accomplish your goals? But if you're going to do this, this is what it costs. When they bring their kids into the dentist, they don't think twice about those braces. How do we get it done? How do we pay? Period. That's what they do, right? Because they have value in those treatments. How do we get them to value what we do? My LP manager, right? But I'm going to charge what I'm worth. Dry eye. I know what I do works. Now I have to pick the right patients. They have to be compliant at home. But if they pay more money, they have skin in the game. They're invested. If you're the lowest cost person and they're looking for value... They're not going to value the treatment. They're not going to put as much effort into it. They have to have skin in the game. They put money into this. They'll work to get it done. Now, when they're done with the treatments, it's on them. But charge what you are worth. Don't always look either at everyone else around you. You're an expert. What works for you? Your patients are your patients. Your philosophies are your philosophies. Charge what you're worth. Make your protocol. Now, I'm not talking about not collaborating with me, collaborating with someone else that's doing this, and taking what they they say and making it your own. You always make it better. Make it your flavor. But don't be afraid to charge for that expertise. You bought the equipment. You did the studying. You put in the time to be this expert. You've trained your staff. You provide the service. If there's someone else down the street that's doing it for less, That's fine. That's their prerogative. Believe in what you're doing. They're not buying a dry eye treatment. They're buying you. Remember that. They trust you. You can talk about IPL. You can talk about meibomian glands, photobiomodulation, la, 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 a bunch of words to them. Do they believe that you know what you're doing? Do you have the solution to their problem? And do you instill confidence in them? Period. If you don't believe in yourself, they're not going to believe in you. Believe in what you do and what you offer, and it's easy to sell because you're not selling, you're solving problems. All right? Last one, I, we talked about this medical exam, right? If someone comes in and there's a medical problem, I have no problem telling them this is a medical issue. We're not doing glasses and contacts. If you want a glasses and contacts exam, we can do that. But I'm not going to solve X, Y, or Z. That's just not what you're insured. They don't cover that. So you have to be able to separate medical and vision. Now, I'm not joking. When I first started, I had a couple of patients. I had a corneal ulcer. I treated it. I want to see them back in about three days, see how they're doing. And they came back. Everything's good. All right, you're doing great. And then they have their copay. You know what they would do? get mad. They get pissed and be like, why are you in charge? This is just a follow-up visit. Yeah, but I'm treating you. I'm still doing what I did. But because I got pushed back, then I wouldn't schedule follow-ups or I'd be afraid to charge for it. Forget that. I'm 12 years in now. I know what my value is. I know what can happen. If they don't want to pay for it, that's on them. We get that copay right up front. Cash, card, check. You tell me what it's going to be, but we're going to take that copay. That's how you run a business, but you have to value what you're doing to justify it in your head. If you think that follow-up visit didn't have purpose, you're going to be sheepish and shy. And guess what? That's how I was when I started. But I'm telling you right now that my patients don't have that issue now. 
because they know I know what I'm doing and I'm taking care of their eyes. Now this goes back to me educating them why they need the follow-up. I probably did a very poor job of that at the beginning. Now I am very adamant. This is why I need you to come back. This is what I'm looking for. If we don't get this treated, it could lead to this. So those early days, it was on me 100%. I didn't explain it well enough, and they didn't see value in what I was doing. Now, I make sure I explain that ahead of time. When they come in, less of an issue. People are always going to have their, their issues, but realize they're pushing back because of their environment, their situation. Money could be tight, and they're going to get mad at everyone else, not just you. But they might have had something happen with their car, their kids need X, Y, or Z, and then you're just the next person that needs money from them. Don't take it personally. You do what you do, but charge what you're worth. All right, now this brings me to the topic of conversation in my, my latest mastermind. Where do you draw the line for charging what you're worth? And I'm gonna bring up the thing of frame adjustments. Do you guys charge to adjust a frame? Now, my initial thoughts. I am huge on customer service. I think about it all the time. I use Costco as the example. You can return a mattress that you bought from them like six years ago without a receipt, bring it back to them, they'll take it back. Gold standard. We all say that we're great at customer service, but if a patient's 15 minutes late, how do you react? If they've had their glasses for a month and then they wanna change the frame, how do you react? We're not great at customer service. We like to say we are, we like to say that's a differentiator, you can be very good and customer service minded, but I don't think we're gold standards compared to anyone else. If you are a gold standard, leave a comment below and tell me why. What are you doing that's better than everyone else? Why do you stand out? And what do you do when that patient's 15 minutes late? What do you do in that situation with that frame? And tell me how you're better than me, better than everyone else, the majority of the people doing this. Now, that being said, I do like to help out patients. I see it as goodwill. All right, screws and nose pads, I charge for those. Now, if they buy a frame from me, I take care of them. I'll give them nose pads, I'll give them screws, we'll adjust it till they are happy. Frames can be $300 plus. The lenses, you know, they're paying $600 sometimes total, maybe more. It's just hard for me to charge that and not take care of what we've done. If I buy a car from someone, if there's an issue, I want them to take care of it. I know how I would feel as a consumer. So that's my thing. When someone comes in, I like to offer goodwill and think that would be something that we would offer. Now, that being said, some of the people talking to me are having patients come in, they're spending a half hour with them and then they're leaving. They're eating up the time of the optician. I push back and say, are you really that busy where it's an issue? If you are, understandable. If you're not and you just see someone come in to get an adjustment, they're not your patient, they're from uh, an online frame, it pisses me off too, right? I get it, I want my pound of flesh. I, I'm providing a service, this is not free, I get it. Well, let's go over some of these things. Cons of charging for an adjustment. Goodwill, I think that if you were to have someone put on Facebook a review that I just walked in to get my glasses adjusted and it was $25, I don't know if that's a good look. Right, it, it runs through my head. I'm like, I don't know how I'd feel if I saw that. If I was a patient and I saw that, I might think, geez, if they're charging for that, what are they gonna charge for everything else? I might have the taste in my mouth, they might be overpriced, all right? They bought from you, why are you charging, right? Pros, people pay for what they value, right? If I value something, I'm gonna pay for it. If I get something for free, it really has no value to me. I see it as also easy. So if you're adjusting for free, you don't really have any skill, it's that easy, you're just gonna do it. You just heat the frame up, right? Yeah, if you did it yourself, you'd break it. So you're coming to me for a reason because you've done it this to yourself, and now there's this crack in the frame where you did it wrong. So maybe there's something to it, but, you know, free means easy. Also, this is a point that was made to me that I thought was very, very enlightening. Patients love you, they will keep coming to you until their insurance changes. And you don't take their insurance. I don't care how good that exam was. Are they still coming back? Honestly, are they? No, probably they're going somewhere else that takes their insurance. That's how loyal they are to you and you provided service to them. How much is free guy gonna value you 
when they haven't paid anything to you and you just adjust their glasses, right? They're probably not going to value you. You're not losing someone that was committed to your office because you did a free adjustment. Now, I do feel like I've turned some of those into patients, but that's neither here nor there. And half the time, the patient is asking, you know, what do I owe you? So I've seen it anywhere from $10 to $45 people will charge for an adjustment. One of my friends in Colorado is charging $35. Like, dang, that's that's decent. Some of my friends say if there's a online frame, I am not adjusting it. We have a policy. If it's from online, we're not adjusting it. I think at my next office meeting, if there's a Warby Parker frame, if there's a Zenny frame, we just do not adjust those. I don't care if you're my patient or whatnot. If you got them somewhere else, we won't adjust an online frame. All right. Now, I'm never going to charge one of my own patients. A patient that buys from me, I will adjust. I'll probably hook up with screws and nose pads and tell, tell the end of time. I don't know. There might be a limit on it, but I'm, I am going to take care of them. I've had patients that have glasses for like five years and they, they have an issue with them. And I'm like, no, it's, it's been five years, man. You've had a good run. Let it go. Right? Move on. But I'm going to do everything I can to take care of my patients. I do, I do have that, that feeling, that strong belief in that. However, if they are my patient, they get the glasses from somewhere else, say it's not online, they go to Costco. They bring it in. They want it adjusted. I'm contemplating a, a ten dollar fee. Now I talk to my staff, and they are not getting any. Like it doesn't happen very often. People are very nice about it. It's not eating up their time. So am I getting greedy? I don't know, I'm going to leave it up to them. It's going to be a discussion. But I thought this was a very good topic for us to go over. I'm huge on charging you what you're worth, but I'm also Huge on being what's best for the practice. And I think there's a, a very thin line that you're walking if you start charging for everything, right? So again, this comes to culture, comes to your patient population. Who do you want to be? Whatever you do, just commit to it. Don't waffle. Don't go back and forth. And remember, it's seasonal for what we do. People see us maybe once a year. So if you try it for a quarter, you try it for two months, you can always switch and go back. A few patients may be angry, may have lost them, but you'll get more. Beta test it. See what happens. See what the pushback is. If one out of 10 is pushing back, you might keep doing it. If like four out of 10 are pushing back, you might want to reconsider. But these are some things that I think we need to consider as practice owners that will make us better in the business sphere, but also give us a better mentality for the expertise and care we're providing. So charge what you're worth. That's what I have. We'll have more for you next week. All right, my friends, a little office talk. So this is a precursor to my episode next week. So this past the past few weeks, I've had a lot of staff members out. All right, just for one reason or another, it was the perfect storm of people getting sick, having leave, vacation, funerals, you name it, tune in next week. I'll elaborate more. But what I want to say to that is we were out, we were short-staffed, but the machine still ran. We're up profit-wise. It was a much more relaxed environment. Now, what does that tell you? That even out of COVID, even out of the great resignation, when we all got lean and mean, we're getting fat and happy again. We're putting in so many staff members, so many extra things, and we're not as efficient as we could be. We were lean and efficient, right? My eyes were opened to so many things we could do better. The flow that we have when a patient comes in, to who's working them up, to what people's responsibilities are in the office. We have a lot of wasted effort and energy and manpower for things that aren't that important. I'm solving that problem. We're getting a virtual assistant. A lot of the staff members, their roles are changing and they're going to be more task specific. Now they're cross trained. They can do multiple things, but this is your focus. Is this, this is what you're doing. Some of the phone calls that they were making don't have to be as long as they are and we can do it better. We can do it more efficiently. 
we're going to start getting a little more lean and mean. So sometimes when you're forced to change, you realize what you could be and what you're you're actually inefficient in. And I think I had that blessing this past two weeks of what I want, what my vision is for the future and where I'm at now and what I need to change to get there. So like I said, tune in next week. I will go much more in depth in how to add via subtraction. So what can we remove and be better at? So that'll be episode 170. Also some fun things in optical. Under Armour, we're increasing our Under Armour frames. They've actually been doing very well. It's a good compliment to Nike. We tried the kids, not really a thing in my office. We tried some of the women's Under Armour, not a thing in my office. Going, you know, knee deep and heavy into the uh, teen men's Under Armour frames. People tend to like them. A good compliment to Nike, so I'll I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, As I told you numerous times, my rep for salt is the worst. I don't want to say he's a bad person, but he's a bad person or just a bad rep. I don't know. Bad person. A little too far. I don't like him at all. Uh, we're dropping salt because he's so awful. Hope he catches wind of this. Uh, that being said, he doesn't answer emails. He doesn't return calls. Uh, and then he gets in fights with me when he comes. The one time he did come for an off frame meeting because, you know, what did I not solve? And I think I'm not bitter, but I'm bitter. Uh, but we're dropping that adding state state we like europa if you want independent frame line to work with europa is great so just personal experience i really like their frames i like working with them so we'll we'll keep you up to date and how the switch to state works and uh if we're if they're moving so that's a brief office talk a little longer in the rundown uh, I want to be respectful. About a half hour is my goal, 20 to 30 minutes. So we'll have more office talk for you next week. Where or oh where has the time gone? We are to the closing thought of the episode. And today I want to talk about happiness. I have a very simple formula for you to be happy. Now, just because it's a simple formula does not mean it's simple to execute. But the key to happiness is either having more or wanting less, period. Full stop, have more or want less. What do you think takes more effort? Probably having more, but there's fun in having more. You know, you work so hard, you get some cash in the bank, you buy that, uh, you know, new pair of shoes, you buy that new car, the watch, the new house. That's kind of fun, right? But can you maintain, can you keep that up? Now, wanting less. This is the easy way to be happy, is know what you value, making the most of it, wanting less. But it's really hard to want less when you're ambitious, when you're hungry, when you're pursuing things. So what I'll leave you with on that is, know why you're pursuing it. If it's for an outside, external validation, probably not worth it. If it's for an internal goal, an achievement that you've dreamt of pursuing, I say it's worth the endeavor. You can want more of that. However, don't want things that don't matter. And that's where you can kind of get rid of some of the fat, wanting less, but prioritizing what you do want. I think that's one of the keys. But again, I'm a very happy, ambitious person. It's hard for me to want less in my business. I like having more. So I'm constantly fighting this battle. Let me know in the comments below what do you want to have more of and what can you get out of your life that would make you want less and be happier. That's what I have for you. Dr. Lily out.